Let's talk a little bit about corrupt law enforcement. Mix and match a couple of stories and how it plays into the family law system. Kern County, California, Bakersfield, city of Bakersfield, where I spent most of my life, where I've dealt with family law issues that I've been through, extensive, major extensive. And corruption shows in the behavior madly in the family law, in the family law um, section. Here, but it shows all over the place. The more that I've learned, I mean, I realized shit was unfair as I was going through it. The more that I've learned now and connected with others, I realize that it's a joint effort all over the place. And, you know, there's two, there's, there's many sides, there's many perspectives to think about because, you know, I, it's not that I just flat out hate law enforcement. It's something that I, I looked up to for most of my life, really. And, and I still do have a lot of respect for uh, a lot of what they do. Um, you know, of course, they're not all bad, but in a way, here's a way where every single person who's out there wearing a badge is, is disrespecting the Constitution, not protecting against threats against the Constitution, foreign and domestic, is the family law system, sheriff's department. So when they get started, they're, they're usually spending the time in the county jail system, and they're spending time in the courtroom as a bailiff. Usually, both of those come before they go and hit the streets. So when they're in there, they're sitting and listening to people, to fathers, mainly fathers. It does happen to some mothers, I always say that. But mainly fathers are losing their children every day by the hundreds, by the thousands. And it's happening without a jury. And the way they make this quasi-criminal in there as far as contempt orders, and they can, and they do, they flat out just throw out contempt charges against mothers in the court in the courtroom um, as they have with me I filed for 220 counts for the first time I could have filed I could have filed back to back to back for over a decade I didn't want the conflict and finally I did go and file and I had 220 counts just for that time I actually had more than that they were telling me that uh, I mean they'll strike them right off the bat they'll strike them right off the bat going in there and good luck holding any uh, contempt enforcement requests against uh, legal custody because they don't give a shit about that. It's, it's even harder to come in there with evidence. And I've gone in there with as hard as the evidence gets and they, they just threw it right out. And so, and then as I explained before, the California Penal Code 278.5 for child abduction with the father if you're so much as late, they, in my case, I was even late to pick up my child and I still got her without conflict. It wasn't until after I left that they decided they didn't uh, get everything out of me that they wanted to. That being my, my ex, but my mother as well. Uh, so many horrible backstabbing stories about her. I got a lot more to tell and, and her involvement in the whole thing. But as I said, I took my daughter I took my daughter for the weekend that weekend and the sheriffs came and threatened to put me in jail for 278.5 for child abduction of my own daughter on my own rights to visitation weekend. Tens and tens and tens of times have I called the Kern County Sheriff's Department, Bakersfield Police Department and said, hey, I'm not getting my child today according to my rights to visitation according to this court order. Immediately put on uh, very low priority on the list. They don't show up five, six hours for the mother. They'll show up right away. Um, but for fathers, they'll show up with batons out, even guns drawn. And not only would they not immediately uphold the equal law with the Penal Code 278.5 for child abduction, but for mine, I had to file. Um, and I only did a few. I could have done. I could have done a hundred internal affairs complaints. Now you know that they take care of their own internal affairs complaints, saying that things were were improperly handled as far as the day. I still got stories to tell about my my daughter finding a gun in her mother's boyfriend's house. It was admittedly there to be used against me. Okay, but. Um, I filed a complaint about, about that, about the way that that response went. 
At the same time, I filed a complaint for two other days where I should have had my child according to my court order. And not only did the police show up extremely late, didn't help, told me to go back to court. Um, but one officer in particular that showed up to several of these instances was extremely disrespectful. I think he's since been fired, maybe because of his involvement in what I reported. They didn't want any more problems, even though they kind of told me to fuck off. Very cut and dry with the court order. Pictures, video, being being at this at the house on time at the pickup location at a residence. And I'll file, I file for a request for investigation with the internal affairs against the officers for not doing their job. So we'll say two, two of those and one according to my child finding a gun. It took the police department three years to finish those internal affairs investigations. And by that point, just tell me that the police department didn't do anything wrong on their end. Three years. And I had to call and write them and ask them over and over again repeatedly throughout that time to, to send me the information about what happened and what were the results of their investigation. I even you know, took copies of these and I sent them to Pennsylvania Avenue and Washington, D.C. You know, and, just, and the local uh, district attorney's office. They all told me to fuck off or, or just didn't even answer. Um, and they take care of each other. They'll hide any wrongdoing. They do not hold, uphold the law equally. Um, it's a concerted effort to trespass the rights of fathers because there is a lot of money also being made off of this in the family court system. These attorneys are leeches off of it. The, the judges, the judges are also the same as the attorneys. They switch back and forth on their positions. Sometimes just temporarily they'll fill in for a judge or they permanently become a judge and can even go back to being an attorney again. And then it's just ironic seeing these sheriffs sit in these courtrooms allow this to happen all day while they're just scrolling their own phones waiting for netflix after they get off work and uh just uh just this week a sheriff a 32 year old female uh, anna alvarez had four kids in her car and was driving under the influence and crashed into a, a city police vehicle she was off duty, had her kids in the car, driving under the influence. I don't know if it was alcohol. I assume it was alcohol. I don't know for sure. Wouldn't make sense to me for her to be on any kind of medications and still be a sheriff and be on medications and not be able to drive or even be around her kids like that. I don't know. Probably alcohol. Kern County is real bad with the uh, drunk driving. Even the officers get in trouble for it here. Um, now, will she get her kids back? Keep custody of her kids? Probably. Um... Will she get a big punishment? Probably not. Should they be held to a higher standard and a bigger punishment? Yes. There was a sheriff just a couple of years ago named Logan August that was stealing, I don't know, I think over 30 pounds or probably a lot more than that of marijuana from the, from the evidence lockers at the sheriff's office and then taking it out and selling it in the street. I saw a couple of videos of his excuses, crying excuses about how the devil took over his life he regrets it and he didn't hardly spend a fucking any time in jail at all and of course he's still out and he's out uh free right now spending time with his kids while there's fathers all over the place facing false allegations without evidence or guilty until proven innocent impossibly proven innocent ever um who aren't seeing their kids at all the law enforcement like the sheriff's office take care of their own, um, let them grossly trespass the trust of the community, doing shit like that, take good care of them, make sure that they're free, make sure that they're still with their kids, or at the police department. In my experience, just a few internal affairs investigation requests, and Part of the, the time for waiting is, is probably so they could get out of their own um, statute of limitations to protect themselves so they will not take accountability. And so holding themselves above other, others, above the community they swear to protect. And organizations like these that refuse to take ownership, I mean, shows a huge problem. 
course we know we've got a lot of big problems out here these are some ways that we can observe direct corruption the sheriff's office the police department sad that they're doing that to men out there and I know the frustration so if, especially if you're one of those fathers and you've you've made it here to my channel and you're like me there's not been anybody else to even talk to about it you got community right here I've been through through a lot of it for a long time probably worse than what you've gone through and what helped me was getting rid of any vices getting rid of drinking getting rid of I smoked a lot of weed, just get rid of all that shit. Whatever the excuses are, whether or not it's it's healthy for you, is to just drop it and figure out a physical fitness program. Okay, and that's what everybody gets around me and my team. Workout program, nutrition program. I keep up with you and hold you accountable to it. Directly every single week, we'll meet as a group on Saturdays, talk about what's going on, talk about the frustrations. Keep you guys from talking any more to your child's mother or the court or, or feeling like, like you got to prove anything to anybody keep you away from any thoughts of violence or harm to anybody else or yourself or even just giving up and not taking any action not trying to be stronger but we'll just accept these struggles and turn out to be the best example for our kids stay chopped no matter what and, and you got the power of social media now. You can tell your stories in a safe way. They're not harassing anybody. Talk about what's going on. Connect with community out there is the most important to keep you guys in a good headspace. And keep you in a good position to lead for your children. The quicker we can do that and cover all those bases and stay strong, the easier and more clear it will become that you do have a bright future ahead. We have to have we have to face some of these struggles and take ownership for how difficult they are but to get through them choose to get through them without making things worse or throwing the rest of your life away it's all worth it even if even even in even the worst cases you don't get to see your kid for over a decade or something they're gonna need you in the future it's worth it all it's worth all that struggle to even make it that far as long as it takes to be there for them that one time in their life whatever crisis they may go through to have always set the example and said no this is the way I've been living this entire time I've always been right here for you it's never these kids fault when they're alienated from you manipulated to even maybe hate you I see this a lot or to even speak bad about you it's never their fault it's another lesson is to never take that out on them never lash out at them and don't even, you know, show any negativity towards their other parent in that way. That's creating an example for them to be tough and make it through anything in life. And they'll know your story eventually. Can't just have them think that, oh, dad gave up, was drinking, full of hate, maybe did something to go to jail. Don't ever go that direction. It's definitely unfair out here. I did not see such evil horrible, maleficent, malicious, evil until I got into the family court. Until I started actually interacting with law enforcement. And I was the one calling them all the time. The psychological phenomena that goes on, the carelessness, deprivation of rights. I understand it. I've been through it. I still go through it. I've learned how to handle it. American fathers. Instagram, American underscore father, send me a message, send me the word strength. We'll start talking about it. We'll get you in the right headspace, fix your mindset and your perspective. You get the eagle's eye view, get above all the problems and know that you can handle any fucking thing that comes your way. I'll see you guys in the morning.